Hello guys, welcome to The Trading Parrot. Have you ever heard the phrase that volume is king when you're trading? Today we're going to cover a DCA bot that is very conservative, very easy to copy, and at the same time is mainly trading using the daily volume measure in BTC. In this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly how to use the minimum volume price to open a deal to make sure that you enter better trades with your bot. We're going to design a bot that is using the volume measure in BTC. We're going to find those spikes using an indicator and then we're going to translate all of that into a simple configuration of a bot that you can copy on paper trading to see how it works first and then decide if this is the right bot for you. Let's start first with the performance. We got here four different assets that I'm trading against GBP, British Pound. This configuration won't require any orchestration. It won't require any signal. It's pretty straightforward. It's kind of set and forget. But as with every single setup that is set and forget, do not expect that you're going to make a 1% a day or anything like that with this strategy. You're going to be looking into 0 0.1, 0 0.16, 0 0.03, 0 0.05. But the whole point of this is that it doesn't require much time from you and it should be pretty stable. Let's look at the performance. All these bots are running for a very extended period of time. It's around two years, more or less, of backtesting. For example, this one on XRP is offering a 44% APR. On Cardano, it's offering 57 APR. I haven't tried other assets, but I will expect that the more volatile the asset is, the more returns you're going to get. This is the critical part that you need to learn about this bot, is that we need to get right the volume. We need to get right what sort of minimum volume we're going to need in the bot here to make sure that we don't get in trouble. So this parameter here, whether it's a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, that will depend on the asset. And as three commas is indicating, this value can be found in coin market cap. But let's go one step at a time. First of all, let's look at the setup of the DCA bot. Here are all the parameters of the DCA bot. You can set any value as a base order, but the safety order needs to be double that amount. We need 40 safety orders, each one spread by 1%. The volume scale is going to increase 10% with every single safety order. So if the first one was 20, then it's going to increase 10% of 20, which is 2 plus 20, 22, and that way is going to be increasing constantly. The target take profit is going to be 3%, and yes, now we are able to backtest with Gavin's backtester trailing take profit in the exact way as DCA bots work on three commas. Each individual asset that we're going to trade with this setup is going to have exactly the same parameters in terms of DCA setup, the only parameter that we're going to have to manually tweak on a per asset basis is going to be the volume filter. In a second, I will explain why for XRP I'm picking 50. First, let's go through the deal start conditions. In terms of deal start conditions, we're going to use three RSIs on three different time frames: One hour, four hour, one day all of them below 70. This is not really very picky in terms of deal start conditions. This is just being cautious that we are not buying overextended. We're going to let the volume be what drives actually to enter a deal or not. Now, to fine tune the volume, there are indicators. I'm going to explain very quickly which ones you can use to find what is the best volume to enter on a trade. But before going into that, let me explain what Fricoma says. Fricoma says that the volume needs to be measured in BTC and it corresponds to the last 24 hours in a similar way as coin market cap is calculating it. When you land on the website, you need to find the asset that you want to trade. In this case, we say we're going to trade XRP. So click on XRP and then click on markets. In here, you're going to find all the available pairs on different exchanges to buy XRP. But in this case, specifically me, I'm using Binance against the pair GVP. So let's search for GVP. You can see that XRP GVP is available on three different exchanges and the top one is Binance. But we got a problem. This volume is still measured in USD, it's 600,000. But it clearly states here on three commas that it needs to be BTC trading volume for the last 24 hours. So we need to change that. In CoinMarketCap, it's very easy because you can change the currency here. If you click at the top on USD, you can change it to BTC, which is what exactly we want. 
Once this shows BTC there, if we search again for GBP, now we can see that the volume on XRP is shown calculated based on the daily value of BTC. So it's 31 BTC. We're using the column volume. But what is the problem of using directly coin market cap? Every day, this volume is going to change depending on who is trading. You cannot just rely on this website to look into the volume. It also, this is showing you just the volume right now for the last 24 hours. So for convenience, we have this indicator called 24 hour volume in BTC, which is pretty cool because you can establish here a volume threshold, like for example, 50 BTC, and it's going to plot in green every peak that is above 50 BTC. This is going to allow you to visualize every time your threshold is met and then you can see exactly how it will trade. Notice that I'm using 50 in the indicator and I'm also using 50 in Gavin's backtester. They're not connected, so you need to make sure that you are inputting 50 on both of them so you see the same effect. For example, here, this is in green, indicating there can be a trade and at the same time, we see a trade in the backtester. If we change this volume to a lower number, for example, let's say 10, the effect is going to be that everything is almost going to go into green because most of the volume is above 10. If we use a value like 50, we're going to see that in the bear market, mostly when we see a big movement, we get that amount of volume. If we travel back in time, here we are in April 2021. We can see how XRP is pumping heavy. And you can see as well that the volume of 50 is almost always fulfilled. There's a lot of volume compared to the volume that we see these days. At the very peak, XRP got into 1.5K daily volume traded in BTC. During the bear market between May and July, there's a little bit of more quietness. And then in July, it starts pumping again for a final peak. Post-September, getting a volume of 50 gets more tricky. And that's how the volume is actually protecting you to enter trades only when the price is going to have enough volatility to exit a trade. In all these areas where there is not enough volume, we could say that it gets more risky to enter with a DCA vote. We actually need that liquidity to be able to close deals more easily. If we completely remove the volume filter and we set it to zero, the performance of your strategy might grow significantly, but at the cost of taking a higher risk. As we can see here, we are feeling the last safety order. And in this situation, we got really lucky that we managed to exit with this pump there. But very easily, the asset could have dropped from there and then leave you holding with a red bag. And that's exactly how, that's exactly why we are using the volume to filter out the situations. You can always backtest different values, or, but it needs to be on an asset by asset basis. And I'm not just meaning XRP. I mean XRP over GBP in certain exchange, the volume for that specific asset. You have to select the very specific asset. And even if you do VTC USDT on spot, and then you go to perpetual contracts, also on Binance.com, the volume is going to be completely different. And because the volume is different, your settings of volume filter are going to have to change. For example, here we are on Ethereum and we can see that the 40% max deviation was not enough from April until now. We got caught and we are heavy in red. We are 50% down. And this is because we're not using any volume to filter when entering a trade. We enter when the volume was 191. You can hover there in the indicator to distinguish what's the volume in that point. We can see that the volume is spiking to 1.3K, 1.5K, and 2.1K. If we go back in time, we can see some peaks that get to even 5K. This is probably the highest volume when we were collapsing in May 2021. So we need to take that in consideration for deciding the filter. We can increase this volume threshold, let's say to 300, and see what happens. We can see that this trade is not going to happen if we change it to 300, but there are a few trades right there. So let's explore what happens in the backtester as well. We're going to change this to 300. That seems to be enough to filter out that bad entry. Of course, it's expected that the results are less than if we don't use the filter, but the filter is a way to reduce the risk. So reducing the risk also is reducing the rewards, but at the same time, you don't have to take care of a red bag of 50% down. And this is just an example. We are looking at a bot that has a deal start condition that is extremely open. It's allowing almost 
any trade. And we are just using the volume to prove that it's a great tool to prevent some of the redbacks. Now, since I've been showing you how to do it on GBP, if we go to an asset like BTC USDT, you can see that the volume on Binance on spot BTC pair USDT is 187K. Now, if we go to our indicator, that's almost the precise number from the indicator that we get, 188K. And if you were trading that on the DCA bot, that's exactly the number that you will need if you want to filter out from that volume and above only. And what you're seeing on the screen is above 300. And 300 is almost a placebo because you can see everything is in green. There's never less than 300 volume on BTC. So what if we were okay to compromise some of the results, but try to prevent this that is going pretty far. You can see here that is filling the last safety order. So if this didn't close there, which by a, by a tiny hair <laughs> it managed to close and then start dumping again, if we want to reduce that risk, what we can do is look at the volume volume at that point is 94k or 91k and we can say we are not going to trade it we're going to trade above that we're going to trade maybe 120 so first let's change it here for display so now this is showing us that this will trade all the dump all the second dump here and then as the price starts moving again we get massive volume there and we start trading that too we need to go to the Gavin's back tester and change this to 120,000. So the first difference that you're going to see is that we enter a little bit later in the trade as the volume starts coming in. And that's always a good thing when you're DCA. DCA from these levels, when there is no volume and then getting caught there, you rely on this relief rally on this dead cut bounce to close the deal. But if this dead cut bounce is not high enough, you're going to get caught there right before the next dump and then you get a red bag. So with the volume, by fine tuning this volume, we are helping the strategy to enter at a better position when there is higher liquidity and therefore it's more easy to close the deals. Yes, we are slashing the profits. The profits are way less right now. But at the same time, we are covering a deviation of 40%, but now we are barely using 22%. So this means that almost half of the safety orders are unneeded. So this is a secondary effect. When you increase the volume, the minimum volume, you enter better deals and less deals. And because of that, you are not going to require as many safety orders as before. So now let's set up this bot to see exactly step by step how to copy it. I'm going to go with this pair because I want to use GBP. You can do it with any pair. It's just a matter of using the indicator to find also the volume. Base order of 10, safety order is 20. We need 40 safety orders. I'm going to place only five in the exchange at once and I'm going to get 10% increase in the volume. Since I'm doing this on GBP, let's look at the volume I need for GBP. And I think we say with 300, we are good to go in this market. So let's change that on both indicators to 300 just to visualize things. Maybe we can do 500. So it's equivalent to what we were seeing in USDT. So on GBP, I need to use 700 to get the same effects as I did on BTC USDT Binance.com with 120,000. So in terms of volume, I'm going to just write here 700. In terms of deal start conditions, I'm going to do three RSIs. As I explained before, they're going to be all 14 and one hour, four hour, one day. And they are all going to need to be below 70. Take profit was three, trailing zero three. We can call it BTC GBP with the amount that we are using, volume trading. Now you are going to notice that I'm using a single pair bot why am I not putting all the assets in the same bot and then going for a multi-pair? The reason is I want to have on each pair a different minimum volume level. I want to fine tune in the back tester right here exactly what volume I need and then back test it and then feel like those are going to be safe enough trades to do during a bear market. Now, where can you get this indicator? This indicator is available to all members of the trading parrot, but of course there are different alternatives alternatives that are free. You can search by volume. Recently, TradingView introduced 24-hour volume. The only one I know at the moment is this one introduced by TradingView recently. You can find it by searching volume. It's called 24-hour volume. 
the only problem with this indicator is that this is still measured in dollars. So it looks the same as this, but here we are already calculating the VTC volume. This one doesn't offer that. And also it's a little bit more difficult because you need to find the actual threshold. That's the part where you can fine tune your bot. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen any other indicator that does this. We built this one because we actually needed to do this calculation constantly and we wanted all our members to make sure that they have the best tools to design the best bots. So guys, I hope you enjoy and you learn something new. If you did, I will really appreciate if you give us a like, subscribe the channel and if you leave any comment. That's the best thing that you can do for this channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.